Okay, if you have your Bibles this morning, open to the book of John, chapter 14, and I want to talk about the Holy Spirit. I want to talk about the Holy Spirit and, in particular, three benefits that the Holy Spirit, Spirit brings to the life of the believer. Now, if we look at Scripture, we can find many benefits that the Holy Spirit brings, but I just want to deal with three that Jesus teaches us in the Gospel of John. I'm going to read three brief passages, okay? So just walk with me. John chapter 14, verse 15, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. He will give you another helper to be with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. This term helper here is also translated in some Bibles as advocate. Drop on down to verse 25. Jesus said, these things I've spoken to you while I'm still with you, but the helper, this, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I've said to you. So not only is he a helper or advocate, he's also a teacher. Chapter 16, verse 12, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things which are to come. So not only is he an advocate and is he a teacher, but he also is a guide. Amen? Holy Spirit is God. You know, it's a mystery. The Godhead is a mystery, really. In the ancient church, they wrestled with who was the Holy Spirit, who was Jesus, actually. And some people thought that there was basically no separation between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the early fathers came out with the statement that there is a separation between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but it's still a mystery because they're all still one. Amen? And so when we're born again, the Spirit of God has a big part to play in that. Because when we are born again, we come under conviction of the Holy Spirit. That is, the Spirit starts working on our hearts, telling us, hey man, you need to get this right. And the only way to get it right is to allow Jesus to come into your heart. So the Holy Spirit works on us. And then Jesus said, no man comes to the Father except the Spirit draw him. So the Holy Spirit is active drawing us to God. And then once we open up our lives and accept Christ into our hearts, the Holy Spirit comes in and the presence of God comes in us to live. Paul said, unless you have the Spirit of Christ, you're none of His. So we believe the Spirit of God comes in in a powerful way and lives in our lives and then we become new creations. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, he who is in Christ is a new creation. For old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. So how many can raise your hand and say, thank God for the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Now, there, once, you're, once you are born again and, and you're living the Christian life, there is a deeper depth you can go to in the Spirit. There is a baptism of the Spirit. There is something you can walk into where the Spirit overflows your life, bursts forth out of your spirit, man, and God just baptizes you in his power and his authority. Amen. But in these passages right here, Jesus talks about the benefits because when he went away, he didn't leave us as orphans. He said, but I'll send you another helper. This term another in Greek is not heteros a, of a different type. It's a term alos, the, another helper of the same type. So he said, I'm sending you a helper just like me. You think you're going to miss me? I'm sending someone just like myself. And he's going to give you a lot of benefits. The first is he's going to come and be an advocate or a helper to you. The term here in Greek is parakletos. He comes beside to help fight our cause for us. That's what an advocate does. It's what a lawyer does in a courtroom. A lawyer steps into the courtroom and pleads your case for you. He's trained to do this. He knows the law. He should be eloquent. He can do it better than you can. So he steps in on your behalf to plead your case for you. That's what Holy Spirit does for us. He comes and he works on our behalf. 
So sometimes we only think of the Holy Spirit as bringing conviction, which he does bring conviction. But we only think of him as like God's watchdog, that every time we do something wrong, he's going to pound us on the head. But actually Jesus said he's coming to help us. He's coming to help us live this life. However, in Scripture, there's another advocate mentioned, and that's Jesus himself. For the Bible says if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who forgives us of all sin. So Jesus really is, I'm going to put it this way, Jesus is the first advocate. Holy Spirit is the second advocate. So what did the first advocate do? The first advocate came and died for you and I. Let's, let's paint this in, in, a, in courtroom terminology. The first advocate came and went to the courtroom of heaven and pled our case for us because we had no power to do that on our own. All of us were guilty before God. All of us born into sin. All of us fall short of the glory of God. And so in the courtrooms of heaven, you and I have no chance. We're doomed. But thank God the Son of God came and he died for you and I. And he walked into the courtroom and he says, Father, I will not only plead their case, I will take their seat in the judgment seat. I will take it and I will pay their penalty for them. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I will pay their penalty for them. So now Jesus has taken your judgment and my judgment. He's paid your debt and he's paid my debt. And now he pleads our cause constantly before the Father in heaven, making intercession for us. Can somebody shout hallelujah? That's what an intercessor does. He, he, you know, an intercessor goes in between. The best analogy I've found of an intercessor is really a secret service agent. What does the secret, I used to pastor in Washington, D.C., and I, I performed a wedding one time for a secret service agent and his wife. So it's interesting life. And, and, and what do these, these guys and gals do? Really, they do a lot, but their primary job is if someone pulls the trigger and a bullet comes toward the president, their job is to take the bullet. It's what an intercessor does. You take the bullet for someone else. Think about that in prayer. Us as intercessors praying for others, we go before God and basically are pleading the case, standing in the way for somebody else. That is exactly what Jesus Christ did for us. He came on Hans's behalf and he took my sin debt that I couldn't carry on my own. He stepped in the way of the judgment of God and he took it so I wouldn't have to take it, so I could be blessed and so heaven could be my future home. Come on, can somebody shout hallelujah? Oh, come on, somebody shout hallelujah in this church. So how is the Holy Spirit an advocate? Well, Jesus said the Holy Spirit will come and will not speak of himself. He'll speak of me. Jesus said he'll speak about me. So think about this. As we're living the Christian life, the Holy Spirit comes alongside us and walks with us and constantly points us back to Jesus and all he did on the cross for us. So let's say there's something you did back in 2015. It's a sin. You committed a sin against God and you prayed and asked God's forgiveness, but still that thing haunts you every now and then, be it the voice of the enemy or be it your own memory, it just comes and haunts you. And you think, man, man, I really goofed it up, man. Why did I do that? And then the Holy Spirit comes and says, hey, look back to the cross. Look back. That sin was not only forgiven, it was forgotten and what's been forgiven has been forgotten and what's forgotten is gone and you need to get over it and you need to live a victorious Christian life and get on with your life. Can somebody shout amen? Oh, hallelujah. Pointing us always back to Jesus, always back to the cross, always back to the, to the liberty we have in Christ. Aren't you thankful for the power of the Holy Spirit? Second thing that Jesus said he would do is he said he would come and he would be our teacher. He said he will come and he will teach you all things. Now the Bible also says there's a gift of teaching. The Bible talks about teachers being in the early church. So it doesn't mean we don't need people to teach us. We certainly do. What Jesus was saying though is that I'm giving you a power. 
I'm giving you a dynamic force in your life that's going to be able to lead you and guide you into the proper truths. Amen? It's like a bell that exists in our heart that like this morning as I'm preaching, when I say something that's true, the Holy Spirit in you is like ringing the bell saying, yes, this is true, and you know it's true. And the converse is true as well. If, if, if you hear something that's not true, that just doesn't sound right, there the Holy Spirit is, is knocking on your heart saying, listen, this isn't right, man. It just isn't right. He comes to lead us and to guide us into all truth. Oh, hallelujah. You know, when I first got saved, I, I, I went into this church and I had a great church and great pastor. And the pastor told me, he said, Hans, I know you're studious and I know you like to study, but let me tell you, let me encourage you. You need to power the Holy Spirit in your life. You need to ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit because he's going to come and give you revelation and understanding of the word you can't get on your own. The Holy Spirit's just going to come and download. I've been studying the Bible since I've been 16, since I, got, I wasn't raised in church, but once I got in church, I just got consumed with the Word, and I've been studying it since I've been 16, but every week that I pick it up, something new comes out of it because it's the Holy Spirit pouring out new revelation, and I believe if I live to be all throughout eternity, millions of years from now, we're still going to be learning new stuff about God and seeing new aspects of His character because the Holy Spirit plums the depths of God, understands the deep things of God and pours them out to us. Can somebody shout hallelujah? How many can raise your hand and say, I need the Holy Spirit as my teacher? Come on, he can teach you some of the best lessons ever. Hallelujah. He's smarter than any professor. He's smarter than any politician. He's smarter than anybody in your, in your family. So why don't you go to Holy Spirit first and say, show me Holy Spirit. Wake up in the morning and say, good morning, Holy Spirit. Show me what I need to be doing today. Open the right doors for me. Close the wrong doors for me. Introduce me to the people I need to be introduced to. Keep me away from the folks I don't need to be around today. Holy Spirit, teach me this day. Can somebody shout amen? amen. Finally, Jesus said he would be our guide, said John 16, 13. He said he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. So the Holy Spirit comes and pleads our case. The Holy Spirit comes and teaches us, and then the Holy Spirit comes to guide us in life. Thank God that Jesus didn't leave us without any guidance. He didn't say, boys, I died on the cross. The rest is left up to you. He didn't do that. He said, I'm sending you a power that's going to be able to lead you and guide you throughout your life. I don't know, you know, I know you guys use GPS systems when you, I got here this morning by GPS and I'm using Google or using Apple the app or something like that. Some of y'all maybe are old school and you still got Garmin stuck to your wind, windshield. <laughs> or maybe you're like my parents that they use Rand McNally. They got, they don't trust anything else but that, you know. My daughters are, it's so foreign, I have two daughters and it's so foreign to them. I pull a map out and they're like, wow, what are all those little lines? <laughs> so, you know, but GPS is pretty awesome and it seems like it's gotten better and better, but, but, you know, it can be aggravating and especially in the old days, it seems like it was aggravating. You could be riding somewhere and then you think you're going right and then you take a turn and then, this voice comes on saying, you know, redirecting, redirecting. And you're like, shut up, shut up. But thank God for the voice of the Holy Spirit that when we make a wrong step, he comes and says, redirecting, get back on the path, Hans. Or your eyes see something you know they shouldn't, you feel that sting like, oh, man. It's the Holy Spirit saying, come on, get back on course. I'm calling you back on course. And the cool thing about it is God never gives us the download for the rest of our life. We aren't born with a blueprint that says, now when you're 15, this is what you're going to be doing. When you're 25, this is what you're going to be doing. When you're 50, wow, wait till you see what's going to, God doesn't give us that. He usually gives us one step at a time. And we walk one step at a time. But we don't need to fret. We don't need to worry. We don't need to wring our hands because we know God, the Holy Spirit, is living in our hearts. And each step we take, God is directing those steps if we just allow him to do it. Can you shout hallelujah? I mean, God does some amazing 
things. I told the story in the early service about uh, I was married for 28 years and lost my wife to cancer a couple years ago. But nonetheless, she had a, an uncle who was uh, not an educated guy. And uh, he moved to California from the mountains of Virginia. And he got in a very bad uh, automobile accident. And it ended up in a court trial. And it really wasn't his fault, but he was charged, I think, with something. I don't remember all the details, but I remember that he didn't know what to do. He didn't know how to go about the court case. How to, how, he didn't know anything. So what he did is he prayed, Holy Spirit, help me. And he went down to the local library. Listen, I don't recommend this as like the way to do it, but I'm just telling you the power of the Spirit. He went down to the local library and just prayed and walked the stacks of books and just let his hand glide over them. And his hand came to one book and he felt the Spirit say, this is it. He pulls it out, opens it up, and it has the casework and all the answers he needs. And he goes back to court and it's his court case is dismissed. <laughs> You can't make this stuff up. Come on, somebody. God knows what you need. When I was called to preach, I was reading. I had the Lord speak to me one day and say, turn to Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. I thought, what is Jeremiah 3, 15? I just felt it in my spirit. So I turned to Jeremiah 3, 15, and the Bible says, I'll give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And I knew God was calling me to a pastoral ministry right there in my life. I've had that happen so many times in my life. Just feel that nudge, that guidance of the Holy Spirit coming, and then I obey, and God just opens up another step of my my journey. Come on. I want you to start praying that. Holy Spirit, lead me. I'm yours today. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Show me what to do today. Can somebody shout amen? amen. My best friend in all the world is named Doug Eccles, and he's an evangelist out of Oklahoma, and he travels internationally, and he preaches revivals in America and overseas. Well, a few years ago, he went to Haiti, and he had been to Haiti many times before, but this time he went, and he had a hotel reservation at a, uh, at, at a hotel, kind of like we have in America, which had multi-levels, multiple stories. And he, he and a couple other guys got off the plane, got out of the airport, got into a taxi, and were driving to that hotel. And he said, he said, Hans, as we were driving, I just felt a gentle tap, just a gentle tap in, in my spirit. And, and I asked the driver, I said, could we go to another hotel? I know another place in town. I think I'd rather stay there. The driver says, no problem. He takes them to the other hotel, and this hotel was not multiple stories. It was like uh, individual little bungalows and rooms outside, all on ground level. My friend said he got there, and they, they, they put their bags in the room, and they came and sat around the pool just to relax, and instantly a, an earthquake happened. The ground shook. The water licked up out of the pool like an ocean wave, and it was the great earthquake of Haiti that happened back a few years ago that, that killed tens of thousands of people. The hotel he was originally scheduled to stay in collapsed completely. And he said, had I not listened to that soft tap of the Spirit, I would have been a dead man. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit comes to lead us and to guide us into all truth. Can somebody shout amen? And one of the most powerful tools you have in your arsenal as a saint of God is the ability to pray in the Holy Spirit. It's one of the greatest things. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall speak with new tongues. Paul said that we don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, taking the sword of the Spirit, the shield of faith, and all that, and then he says, and praying in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. So we have the ability to pray in the Spirit. And what starts happening? Happening when we pray in the Spirit is I believe God starts praying through us by His Spirit things that we will face in the future that we don't know about yet. I really believe it, that the Holy Spirit comes. Paul said, I will pray with my mind, I will pray with the Spirit. I will sing with my mind, I will sing with the Spirit. So we pray in the natural, God bless Bob and Joe and mom and dad and God help me do this and okay, I'm out, Lord. 
And then we allow the Spirit to take over, and he knows the depths of our heart. He knows what we need, and he plums the depths of God's knowledge. And so the Spirit starts praying through us the perfect will of God. I didn't know I was going to lose my wife. I didn't know we were going to go through COVID in 2020. None of us saw that coming. I don't know anyone that saw that coming. But you know what? None of those things caught God by surprise. God has all knowledge, omniscience, and foreknowledge. He knew it was coming, and the Spirit was preparing our hearts for whatever we had to face. Maybe you feel like you're not ready. Maybe you feel like you've been through an emotional train wreck. I'm telling you what, let the Holy Spirit minister through you. Let him pray through you. Pray, God, give me more of the Holy Ghost in my life, Lord. I need everything God has for me, don't you? Folks in my church will often ask me, the new believers will, they'll say, Pastor, do we have to uh, pray in the Holy Spirit or be baptized in the Holy Spirit to join your church? And I said, no, you don't. You just need to be born again to join my church. But you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit to go to Walmart. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit to pass these people on the highway who give you hand signals when they pass you. You need the Holy Spirit to raise those kids of yours. You need the Holy Spirit to have a powerful marriage. You need the Holy Spirit to be able to lay hands on somebody who's sick and believe God for miraculous healing in Jesus' name. You need the Holy Ghost to show you revelation and drop things in your spirit that you couldn't get through natural knowledge. You need the power of the Holy Ghost to fire you up, hallelujah, and take your worship to another level. You need the power of the Holy Ghost that when you enter into your prayer closet. Your prayers are no longer dry and no longer are the heavens brass, but the Holy Spirit comes and opens up everything. My God, I feel like preaching right and the Holy Ghost comes and opens up heaven's blessing to you and the windows of heaven are open, the storehouse of heaven is open and God says, my child, just look at all the things I have for you waiting. Once you open up your spirit and say, God, Holy Spirit, come, fill me afresh, Lord. Oh, come on, put your hands together and give the Lord a praise in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember when I was, I was born again at 16 and I was in a great on fire church and my pastor told me, he said, Hans, you need to be filled with the spirit, man. Pray God fills you. Pray God overflows you. And somebody may say, yeah, but I'm saved. What more do I need? Didn't I get it all when I got saved? Well, what's interesting is Paul says in Ephesians, he says, don't be drunk with wine where is an excess, but be filled with the spirit. That term in Greek is a continual verb. Be filled and filled and filled and filled again and filled again with the Holy Spirit. Pray it on a regular basis. Fill me, Lord, with your presence. Holy Spirit, be my advocate. Holy Spirit, be my teacher. Holy Spirit, be my God. One more thing, and we're going to pray here. But if you notice in the book of Acts, in the Acts book, uh, book of Acts chapter 2, the apostles are filled with the Holy Spirit in the upper room. They're filled with the Holy Spirit in the upper room, Acts chapter 2, and then they go immediately out of that experience and they begin preaching the gospel. But then in Acts chapter 3, Peter and John heal a lame man at the gate and then they're arrested and chastised and told no longer to preach in the name of Jesus. So what did they do? Did they give it up? Did they pack their bags and go home? No, they went back to the upper room and they prayed again, Lord, grant unto your servants boldness. That was signs and wonders. Miracles may be done in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says the place where they were praying was shaken and they were filled again with the Holy Spirit. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. These are the same guys who were in Acts chapter 2 or in Acts chapter 4. They were filled in Acts chapter 2. They're getting filled again in Acts chapter 4. That tells me whatever happened in 1985 needs to happen again in 2022. That tells me what God did in my life in that last year. I need more of it this year. Oh, hallelujah. That tells me what happened in my life in 1986 when I was baptized. I need that fresh touch again in my life. Don't let your Christianity get stale. Don't let it get moldy. Come on, keep it afresh. Keep the fire on the altar. Keep God moving in your prayer life. Be open to the power of God. Hallelujah. Don't come in this church on Sunday morning and say, well, man, it's been a rough week. Jamie, resurrect me worship team, bring me back to life. No, make it your goal to come in here so on fire that you've had such an amazing week that once you get in here, they're going to have to like set you down. You're so crazy. You're like, 
Come on, guys, let's get it going because this becomes your celebration point throughout the week, you know? You know, I, I hate to bring this up, but, you know, I used to party before I got saved. But none of y'all can witness to that, so whatever. <laughs> but I noticed when we would party, you know, there were some people that it, it took a whole lot to get them going. They had to drink a whole lot before they felt anything. Then others, they have a drink or two. They're the life of the party. I want to be like that in the things of God. I want to walk in like the party has just arrived, man. Come on, we're going to have church. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Come on, if you want to be filled with the Spirit, wave at me right now. You want everything God has for you. Come on, Lord, hallelujah. Stand with me right now in Jesus' name. I want everybody in here to bow your head. And I want you to close your eyes just for a moment with me. And we're going to pray. I'm going to pray two things this morning. I'm going to pray for anyone who doesn't know the Lord. And number two, I'm going to pray for everyone to be baptized and filled with the Spirit afresh this morning. Amen. So come on, right now, every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're in this place this morning and you don't know the Lord and you've never accepted Christ into your heart, or number two, maybe you've served the Lord in the past, but you've just grown cold on that commitment and you need a, you, you need a renewal. You just want to re rededicate your life to the Lord. If that's you, I want to see your hand this morning. It's, I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to single you out. But I want it to be an act of faith between me, you, and the Lord, that you say, Pastor Hans, pray for me this morning. I need Jesus in my life. So if that's you, let me see your hand right now. Come on. You, thank 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 you. Thank you. Maybe there's others. Come on, let me see in the balconies. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise God. Maybe there's others. Come on, we're going to wait on you in the name of Jesus. You say, Pastor, pray for me. I need the Lord into my life. I need the Lord in my life right now. I don't want to walk out of these doors not having my, my heart right with Jesus. Thank you, guys. Come on, we're going to pray, and I want to ask everybody to pray with me. And when I pray, I want to ask you to pray out loud and, and mean it, man. I've prayed this way hundreds of times with folks, and I've seen people leave out who walked in under the burden and, and crushing weight of sin and walk out completely set free. Had guys, I had one guy was going to get a divorce and he was hooked on drugs and alcohol and, and he set a meeting with me. But before we could get the meeting accomplished, he came to church and answered an altar call just like this one. And he said, Pastor, everything changed. I walked out and that weight of sin was gone off my life He's still with his wife to this day. <laughs> and God turned that man around 180 degrees. So come on, if you want to accept the Lord in your life, pray it with me. Pray it out loud. Father in heaven, come on, just pray it with me out loud. Father in heaven, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I turn my back on sin and my past. Thank you for a new beginning, Jesus. I receive your mercy. I receive your grace. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you that my sins are gone. Give me the power to live the life that you, you demand. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Come on, can everybody say amen?